I have a few broken end mills which I decided to make some use of through grinding them to pointy drag engravers um, which would allow me to engrave very fine lines uh, for example when when I want really 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 thin lines like like these ones it's uh, the top one is 0 0.03 millimeter wide and then 0 0.05 and 0 0.07 which are very thin for uh, engraving normally um, I ground I, I will show the grinding in a separate video but um, some of them uh, turned out to be quite good this one is 70 degrees um, and uh, I think it's 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 quite nice to have these pointy things I, I will test them I never use drag engravers so I will see what they can do this one is for example 45 degree The actual engraver is really very simple. I am just using a 100 millimeter long uh, collet chuck holder with an 8 millimeter shaft and also a long 8 millimeter linear ball bearing plus a spiral spring and some uh, washers. And that's about it. Of course, the linear ball bearing must be fixed uh, to, to my CNC somehow, and I decided to design and 3D print a holder, which I can attach to my spindle holder. For the actual design, I used FreeCAD, so the design work was quite fast. But of course, printing took like forever. It took uh, about four and a half hours. I am printing with 0 0.2 millimeter layer height, so it takes uh, quite a while to print uh, 55 millimeter, which is the total height of uh, the holder I designed. Eventually the printer was ready uh, and I must say it looks quite good in my opinion. I will say after some cooling how well it fits on the spindle holder. Assembling takes only a few seconds, just uh, had to press in the ball bearing and um, that's about it. Putting it all together is really very simple. The engraver is fixed to the spindle holder using four of the six holes and of course I had to drill and tap four new holes in my spindle holder. Please note that it is not a mistake that I'm using only four of the six holes. It is designed like that to enable me to move the engraver a bit higher or lower if I want to. In this case I will only use the top four holes.
that's it it's very quick and easy to attach it to the spindle holder and if I want to remove it I can just as easily remove it one reason for removing it would be if I want to use the vacuum cleaner attachment I have uh, but uh, the engraver is not interfering with the spindle so I can have have it on all the time unless I want to use something else which I can attach to the spindle holder or as I said the vacuum cleaner attachment I can in fact use both the spindle motor and the Dirk engraver in the same job if I want to And now it's time for a quick test at the end of this video. Uh, I will later on make a new one where I am making some uh, signs engraving in both metal and acrylic. Currently the engraving speed is 2000 mm per minute, but uh, as it looks I think I can increase that to at least a double and still get very good results. In fact I think uh, that the speed of 4000 mm per minute would be far too fast if I used a thin engraving, V engraving bit and a rotating spindle. The end result looks uh, quite nice in my opinion. I mean, imagine if I made something more useful and had some red lights under it, it would look really nice. Even though uh, next time I will reduce the depth to 0.15 mm, now it's uh, 0.5, which is a bit too much. That's it, uh, thank you for watching and I hope I see you next time.